Okay, welcome everyone to a demonstration of Certera's Integral software application. Uh, this will be given today by Kevin Trim, Keith Neforth, Cindy Liang, and Michael Clifton. We're, today we're going to demonstrate a pharmacometrics collaboration workflow where there will be four users accessing and working on the same study. An administrator will begin by creating a study and assigning permissions. Uh, a partner will then upload data into the repository. A data scientist will prepare the partner's data for analysis in a non-MEM experiment. The first data analysis will analyze the prepared data in non-MEM and also R. The partner will then update the, the original data, causing the resulting data downstream to become out of date. The data scientists will then return, rerun their analysis, and update the data file, allowing uh, a second analyst to then go in and update the uh, non-MEM analysis. And at the end, we'll take a look at the safe point features of, of Integral so we can see how all of this ties together. So we'll begin the process within Phoenix. I'm an administrator of Integral, and I will access the application from the Phoenix plugin Integral browser. Sign in with my username and password. Now I'm in the integral home screen. We will use today the Acme Corporation schema within integral. Before I can um, create a study, I will verify the permissions of my partner to make sure that they have access to the type of uh, study that I wish them to see. The partner is Michael Clifton. Here I see that he has a partner license and he is in the membership group or permissions group called external partner. This external partner uh, permissions group uh, it has a rule within it that's called CRO, and it's showing that the folder type study uh, with the property partner equal to true will have access to certain things. I will now set up the type of access that uh, the partner will have. So they're going to have read access to the root folder. And then within the root folder, they will have the access to create, read, edit, and, del and delete content in any folder of the type data. Okay, so now I will go back to the home screen and I will create a new study. I'll choose the type of folder study. I will give it the name of 18 December. And I will make the, the metadata condition partner to be true so that Michael will have access to that. All right, now I will turn it over to Michael so that he can upload a study. Can anyone hear me? Yes. Great. All right, thanks. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. So uh, now I'm going to uh, log into Integral through a Chrome web browser. You can also log in through Edge and Firefox, um, but in this version we'll dem we're demonstrating on Chrome. 
So I'll log in the same way Kevin did. I'll enter my credentials. Now I'll uh, go to the Acme repository. And as you can see here, since I'm a partner, I can only see this folder that Kevin created for me. And because he only gave me permissions to the data folder, that's the only folder I can see within this folder. So now I'm gonna demonstrate how to upload a data set. So if you click on the ellips ellipsis menu here, there's an option for upload files. I click on that and this uh, box appears where I can either drag and drop a file into this box uh, like this, or I can click on the box and I can load from my uh, local directory. So here I'm gonna select the file, uh, the op, click open, click upload, and now I have to enter my reason uh, for uploading the data. And then I need to uh, sign my credentials. And I'll just give a quick refresh, but you can see here now that the, the file I uploaded is here in the data folder. You can see that uh, this file contains a contents tab, which uh, shows me the, uh, the data within my file, uh, the properties for this file, um, the history behind it, whether it is, it's updated, uh, the permissions behind how this file can be accessed or who can access it, and then CDISC information if it were a CDISC file, which it's not in this example. So I'll uh, give it back to Kevin. Kevin? Sure. Okay, so I'll just do a refresh on my screen as well. And if I check now inside the data folder, I can see I do indeed have this Theophylline uh, CSV file. Of course, I can see many more studies than Michael did because I'm an admin and I have many more permissions than he does, including within the 18 December folder itself. I see that I have an experiments folder and a library folder, which Michael did not because uh, I only gave him access to the type of folder uh, that data is. Okay, so in order to prepare this file further for a non-MEM analysis, uh, I'm going to work with that in Phoenix. Now, in order to do that, I actually have a Phoenix workflow that I can use uh, in order to help me prepare this, this file that's already stored here within Integral. And I will demonstrate the copy and link functionality in order to uh, make use of that Phoenix workflow. So uh, here I have a library uh, type of folder. Within it, I have this Phoenix workflow called cohort. And on this side uh, of the screen is my target area where I'd like to make a copy of this template. So within copy and link, I, you can either do a copy or a link. They are very different things. In, within this demo today, we will uh, demonstrate both functionalities. In this case, because it's a template, I do not wish, uh, wish to keep a relationship with the original version of the file. So I'm just going to do a copy. A copy is exactly what it sounds like it would be. Uh, it's just taking a copy of a file and having it uh, in another location. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so now within my library folder, I do indeed have a copy of the cohort Phoenix template. Return to the home screen, and I will initiate creating a Phoenix experiment. I'll give it a name and call this the preparation experiment. 
and I will utilize the Theophylline dataset, and I will also utilize this cohort template. This will create a Phoenix project for me to include both of those elements from the repository. Okay, because that's a CSV file, I have to designate the way the file is structured. Here we go. I now have this preparation Phoenix project with the awful in data and with um, uh, this workflow template called WF with inside the workflow node of the Phoenix project. So let's take a look at this data wizard. I'm going to map in my data. And all this uh, data wizard does is really create a cohort variable via this uh, transformation function uh, based on the uh, subject ID, or the numerical order of the subject ID. So if, if it's less than seven, it'll be cohort one. And if it's greater than seven, it'll be cohort two. So let's run that. So now we have the same data set with the variable cohort added. And once I get down to ID uh, seven and above, we have a value of two instead of one. Okay, so now I'd like to save this work back to Integral so that Keith can use it. So I come to Integral, save. An important feature within the Phoenix browser uh, and connection to Integral is the concept of uh, the save options. So within my data wizard result, I have a worksheet that I'd like to save as a, a common delimited file. And I'll give it a name and I'll just call it Keith. And then this, um, this file which is the result of the data wizard, will be saved externally within Integral instead of within the Phoenix project. So this will be packaged up and sent back to Integral as the first safe point of this experiment. We can take a look at this. And if I come inside uh, within my experiments folders, I now have this preparation experiment. And I have a the, the Phoenix project itself, but I also have this uh, workflow result object, which is the data file that Keith will need in order to uh, perform the non-MEM analysis utilizing the cohort variable. Now, before I do that, I'm, before I, I, I hand it off to Keith, I'm going to now show the functionality of linking a data set. So I go back to my copy link screen. And I locate my file of interest, and I'm going to make a linked copy from that location into the data folder. Instead of choosing copy this time, I'm going to choose link, and I'm going to choose the option of auto update so that if um, my original uh, worksheet were to be updated, then this linked copy would also be automatically update, updated. This link re retains a relationship between the original and the, and the copy within the database. So 
Okay, so now we can take a look in the data folder. And this time, because it's not a copy, uh, it's a link. We have a new icon, which is resembling uh, a chain link to show that, in fact, uh, it is a linked version. Okay, with that, I'll hand it over to Keith so that he can perform his non-MEM analysis. Thank you, Kevin. Okay, so um, Kevin has told me that my uh, data set is ready, and I am going to go and take that data set and do an initial non-MEM analysis on it. Um, you can see my integral screen, correct? Yes. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a space within uh, integral to hold my uh, non-MEM analysis. And I'll do that by creating a new folder in the experiments area. I'll just call it non-MEM. You, now, you do have the capability to configure um, sets of folders. In this case, I'm creating a single folder. Um, integral allows you to create perhaps a directory structure to store non-MEM or R or SAS or, you know, uh, really any any software that you want to do to do this type of analysis. Um, it's quite a quite a handy feature. In this case, I'm just selecting a, uh, creating a, a single folder uh, for the purposes of the demo. So I've created uh, my non-MEM folder. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the synchronization function to bring this folder structure over to my local environment where I can uh, work as I normally would um, with the tool sets that I have uh, in, in my local environment. And to do this, you simply highlight the uh, project folder uh, that you want to bring over. And um, this is an area on my local directory. Uh, it's configurable. Uh, I have it stored at this, at this location. And when I click uh, sync, it asks me, do I want to do I want to sync the folder structure over? And I get a quick um, success message. So now, if we open up a uh, explorer window, I can navigate to that uh, area, and you'll see the 18th December project folder under experiments. I have my non-mem folder. The data sets are there um, under data. Everything is everything is brought over. So what I'm going to do is I have a couple of prepared um, scripts. One is a is a data um, preparation script, a little R script, and I have my uh, initial non-mem uh, control file model file uh, for the non-mem analysis. So first I'll open up the um, the R script, and essentially what this what this little script does is it picks up the picks up the um, data set, uh, modifies the uh, header information, so non-mem will, will ignore the header row, and um, prepares it for uh, for the analysis. Very, quite quite a simple uh, quite a simple script. So you'll see now uh, I've run that. Within my uh, non-mem area, I now have this pkdat.csv, and what I'm going to do is open up a, a command window, and you know perhaps some of your users wish to run everything from the command line. Later on, Cindy's going to demonstrate a, uh, a rerun of this analysis using Piranha. It just kind of points out the flexibility and in integral in terms of being able to support um, work in in a software agnostic way. Both across software tools and even within uh, within software tools. So um, I'm just going to call in my um, non-mam. So uh, people who know non-mam will recognize this. Invoking the NFV 7.4 bat file and specifying my model run and output. So we'll run this. And this is a small uh, data set. You can see in the background the directories being populated with the typical non-mem uh, non files, output files. We'll just wait for this to complete. As we're um, 
waiting. The next step is going to be to basically take this output and, and synchronize it back up uh, into integ integral. And as I do that, what I'll be doing is specifying a uh, data dependency to that source data set I ran the script on. And in doing so, then if that data set um, changes, I will be notified that my source data set is no longer um, the most recent one and that you know I need to at least check my analysis to uh, see if I need to make any changes. So that's complete. Here's my non-mem output files. I won't spend any time you know, going further into those. And if we come back to Integral now and click on my 18 uh, December project under non-mem, you see we have all these uh, folders. And note, note that the uh, icons and the text are grayed out. Um, that means that they have not yet been, been synced back to Integral, and that's what I'm going to do uh, right now. So we simply highlight that experiments folder click on the left arrow. Uh, this is a non-mem experiment. Click next. And here's where I want to set a data dependency to my uh, source input file. Uh, click next. I don't want to exclude anything from this, uh, from this transfer. And I'll just use add files as, a, uh, as an audit trail. Okay. Enter my credentials. Sign in and back over to you. Uh, be to Michael. Yes. Hey, Michael. Thank you. And so it's worth noting that, that Keith was using a, the client application, uh, which is different than what Michael uses with the Chrome browser and I used within Phoenix. The client application is a locally installed Electron app that's, uh, as Keith demonstrated, is is suited to uh, transfer uh, information in between integral and your working environment, which in his case was on a PC, but just as easily could be uh, on an on-premise server or in the cloud. Uh, can everyone see my uh, integral screen? No, we see your desktop. Okay, how about now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, so I'm gonna click refresh. And as you can see here, I still only see the file I uploaded. Uh, I can't see that file uh, Kevin linked because that's attached to uh, an experiment folder I'm not supposed to see. So that's a demonstration of the security permissions that we have. Um, so now what I'm gonna demonstrate is uh, say uh, I realized that uh, the data I uploaded was uh, incorrect. Something needed to be updated. So in order to do that, first I'll show you the pro uh, there's a property for this uh, file that says revision. So currently this is revision one. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to upload a new revision. So I'll click on that. And then this time I'll drop over, I have a, a file called the op updated. So I'm gonna drag that in, I'm gonna upload. And it'll ask you, are you sure you want to upload the file, um, the op updated as a new revision of the file, the op. So they're different file names. So it's it recognizes that and I click OK. And then I'll enter my reason. And I'll click uh, refresh again. And you can see here, uh, when I clicked refresh, this folder turned red. So first I'll demonstrate the fact that with this file, you can see now it says revision two. And if I go to the history file, you can see uh, for revision one, I uploaded data for analysis and then revision two, uh, the data set was updated. And what I can also do is from the history tab here, I can generate an audit report to show me what the differences were between those two versions. So I uh, click generate audit report. I choose uh, to include a file difference. Uh, this audit report will also let you know any property changes that occurred with the file as well. Um, so I'll click include file difference, most recent versus prior, and I'll click generate report. 
you can see here it saved it to my desktop so i'll open that and within the zip file you download you uh you receive a, an audit report in a PDF file. And this will just kind of give you details on the, on the file itself and any property changes and uh, any reasons for, ch for changes. Uh, and then the other file, this Excel file, or uh, yes, it's Excel file, uh, if you open it, it'll show you the differences between the two files. So you can see here uh, on line number four of my file uh, under the column dv the original value 6.57 was changed to eight so now i'll get out of that and uh, i'll turn it back over to kevin thank you michael Okay, as Michael said, uh, if I come back here to integral, I can see that this, this study has some element that's out of date. Unlike Michael, I can drill down and see further where the, uh, where the inconsistency now is. And I can see that it's within my preparation experiment. So let's take a look at that. Uh, if I go to the history tab at the folder level, I can see I've got the save points item, which I can drill into further. And I can see that uh, this experiment is dependent on two external files. One of them is the Phoenix template that I brought down with me on revision one, and that one's just fine, it's up to date. But the other one is this Theophylline file, which I'm still using revision one, but now I can see that revision one is no longer the most current vision, which is why I have the red color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Phoenix, and I'm going to remedy this by simply right-clicking on the data file within my experiment and coming down here to say refresh from source. So I'm basically now pulling down the second version, which I now have. Uh, however, now my Phoenix experiment itself uh, is out of date, which I can remedy by simply rerunning uh, this version. And now I can see that on line four, if I include the, uh, the title uh, as a line under the dependent variable, I have an eight instead of that 6.57. So now my, ex my experiment is up to date, come back to integral and I save. My save options should be remembered. So it's going to perform the same action as it did previously. Click finish. Enter my reason. And once again, my Phoenix project will be packaged up and sent back to integral. Which I can view in the browser. So now, in fact, my experiment is up to date. And if I come here, I can go back to the um, history, Let me make this a little bit bigger. And if I look at my save points, now I can see my, my second save point is in fact up to date. And if I check my dependencies, I can see that now I'm dependent on the second version of Theophylline, still dependent on the first version of the cohort template, which is fine. But now I'm up to date there. And um, everything is uh, how it should be. However, in the meantime, things that are, are churning in the background. And what's happened now is that the non-MEM experiment is out of date because we've used, um, uh, this was depending upon my output, which is this file. And although mine is up to date, now Keith 
is not up to date. So with that, I can turn it back uh, actually over to Cindy, who will take over from Keith as a second analyst on this experiment. Thank you. Um, can you see my screen now? Yes, we see your desktop. Okay. Now I go to um, this integral uh, client application. So in this use case, I am on the same team uh, with Keith, and uh, he happened to be on leave when the study uh, data were updated by Michael. So um, on the absence of um, uh, Keith, and then I will just uh, log into integral and then to check on the status of his studies. So now I'm logged into this uh, client application and you can tell um, the difference um, from here, this synchronization um, icon, this, is, this tells us that we are uh, using the integral client application. So this is different from the web application and the plugin and Michael and Kevin just used. And then um, when I come to here to the folder browser, I see that this folder is red and then I click to expand uh, the folder and then I click on the experiments to see the non-MEM folder is in red. So that means the study in here um, is out of date. So then uh, because this is a, a key study, so I don't have this uh, study on my desktops. So for the first thing I need to do is to uh, uh, sync this uh, study to my desktop for my analysis. So I just click on this uh, synchronization button and then um, go to this uh, um, a local directory, the path here, to make sure that I'm syncing this folder to the right um, destination. And this is correct. And now I just need to sync this folder to local. Okay, now the syncing has done, and I just go to my local uh, desktop and then to find this study. And I see my folder here, the December the 18th. That means I have successfully synced everything to my local, um, um, local drive. And uh, different from Keith, I usually like to use Prana to run my analysis. So for in this case, I just need to go to my Piranha and to find um, this folder, December the 18th folder. Okay, now I found my folder and then I come to the experiments, no man, and then double check the file, everything is okay. And if everything's okay, I just need to click on the execute button in here and to rerun this model based on the um, updated data sets. Okay. Now my uh, reanalysis has been done, and then I just need to uh, go back to my integral client application and uh, go to this local directory, click on refresh, and then click on this um, uh, folder and check on if everything has been updated. Um, click on the experiments and non them. Then I can see some of the files here are in red and some of them are in blue. So that means uh, after this reanalysis, part of the, uh, the files has have been updated, but then part of the files are still remains the same. So that's why those files were not updated are still in blue and the, those files that are has been updated are in red. And then now what I need to do is just to sync back this experiment to my integral uh, to save it.
Oh, it's the other one, Cindy. Oh, this one? Yes. OK. So I just uh, selected my dependency, and then I don't need to exclude, exclude everything. And um, I just need to enter the reason. And enter my credential. OK, then it's back to you, Kevin. All right, thanks, Cindy. All right, so that'll take a moment to update. We can check on it. Oh, it's actually already done. All right, so the uh, 18 December um, st uh, study is now, all of its experiments are up to date. If we just quickly check on the uh, non-MEM one, we should see that we now have uh, a third save point. So the first is when Keith originally created the folder. The second one became uh, out of date. But the third one uh, that Cindy updated is now up to date because her dependency uh, is based on the second version of that, uh, that file called Keith that I made earlier. So that's a, a quick demonstration of how we can use uh, Integral with multiple people. Uh, Keith is actually in New Jersey. I'm in Canada. Michael is in Texas. And Cindy is in Chicago. And all of us are working together on a single study uh, collaborating uh, within Integral and having really high traceability of all the work that we've done uh, to contribute uh, to this project. Thank you very much. Okay, have we stopped the recording? Yes.